a new life begins in an old land but a life already limited son of a refugee grandson of refugees he was born in a hospital that many other palestine refugees will be born in houses like these in baka camp north of amman jordan home to more than fifty thousand palestine refugees they are among today's almost two million palestine refugees made refugees and left landless and homeless by the 1948 Arab-Israeli war. Bakar starts to wake up. Preparations for the day begin. The hum of life builds. One Palestine refugee family, the Al-Jamals, rouse themselves to start the day in their tiny three-room home which houses eight persons. The children were born refugees and their parents became refugees at an early age. Bakar is almost a city in itself with shops and services and a market. Life goes on as best it can in a crowded refugee camp. The Al Jamal family, originally from Lida, Palestine, uprooted by the 1948 war, fled to a refugee camp in the West Bank near Jericho. With renewed fighting in 1967 and the occupation of the West Bank by Israel, they again fled. This time, across the River Jordan, eventually settling in Paka. Off goes Nivin, the eldest child, to the early shift at a United Nations school in the camp at 7.30 in the morning. She joins hundreds of others on their way through the dusty streets of Paka. The hum of life continues to build in the streets and marketplace. The car started out as a tent city in 1967 to house refugees displaced by the 1967 fighting. Gradually, tents were replaced by more durable shelters. And as time went on, the car took on the appearance of a town. Many families still have no water outlets in their shelters, so they come to a water point to fill jugs with water each day. With her husband off to work in a car repair shop near the camp and one child at school, Mrs. Al Jamal puts the house in order. Daoud, who goes to the afternoon shift at the UN school, struggles to put on his leg brace and special shoes needed to help him walk and overcome a deformity caused by polio. Rush hour in Bakar. People going off to work south 20 kilometers to Amman or to nearby towns. Most Palestine refugees come from rural origins. So with the loss of their land, those with no means to re-establish themselves or no other skills have had to transform their lives. Education has played a major role in the change from a rural to an urban people. Since 1950, Many voluntary groups have been providing assistance to Palestine refugees and the international community has been doing so through the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Near East, UNRWA for short. UNRWA was established to provide emergency food and shelter in 1950. In the course of time, and as no Middle East settlement was reached, Education became UNRWA's priority, giving refugees a chance to rebuild their lives and learn marketable skills. Many of those crowding onto buses on their way to work are products of the UNRWA school system. Nivin El Jamal joins her classmates in the schoolyard at one of the 635 schools in Lebanon, Jordan, the Syrian Arab Republic 
and the occupied West Bank and Gaza Strip, operated by UNRWA in cooperation with UNESCO. But these schools are in danger of closing because of chronic financial problems faced by UNRWA. Others go about their daily errands in the camp. This camp is one of 65 camps for Palestine refugees in the Middle East. But not all Palestine refugees live in camps. Only about 650,000 do. The rest live in the towns and cities of their host countries. Economically, if not politically, integrated. By refugee standards, the El Jamals have a good-sized home. They have an indoor latrine, a small courtyard, a good stove, and an indoor water tank to store water they have to buy from a tank truck. As his mother needs the dough for making bread, Daoud completes his homework to be ready to go to school in the afternoon. Two shifts are needed at the school because of the huge numbers of children wanting and needing education. Preschool activities are provided by voluntary agencies in some camps. But most children have to play in the streets or at home, like the Al Jamal children, who play on a makeshift swing in their courtyard, waiting for the fresh loaves of Arabic bread to come out of the oven. UNRWA provides schooling for about 340,000 children, and with the natural population increase, this goes up by a few thousand a year. Many women are already lined up at the UNRWA Health Center, bringing their children for checkups or coming themselves for prenatal care. UNRWA's health program stresses prevention and health education, paying special attention to the care of mothers and children, as health patterns are established at an early age, and proper treatment and diet now can prevent problems later. UNRWA also provides a supplementary feeding program for children under the age of six, and for others on the recommendation of a doctor, to ensure a balanced healthy diet. Every other month, Daoud and his father go to the UNRWA Ration Distribution Center for small rations of flour, cooking oil, sugar, and rice. UNRWA doesn't buy the food. It distributes food donated by governments and the European community. In the early 1950s, relief was UNRWA's most important program. But with the increasing self-sufficiency of many refugees and UNRWA's lack of money, the program has been reduced. It's now aimed primarily at the very poor, who receive extra food rations, small cash grants, and assistance with repairs to their homes. The ration, however, is seen by Palestine refugees as a symbol of their status and the commitment of the international community to assist them until a just settlement is reached in the Middle East. But as they see UNRWA services being reduced, and with the threat of further reductions, they feel a sense of abandonment. We do need rations. Either let us go back to our homeland, or give us help. We want to go back, and we would eat sand, if only we could go back. Ya Allah, ya Rabbi. 
Beef cut everything. Five kilos of flour and not even every month. What good is five kilos when there are ten or twelve in a family? We don't want the rations. Her housework finished, Mrs. Altamal takes her two-week-old son, Honey, to the UNRWA clinic. This is one of over a hundred similar clinics run by UNRWA under the technical guidance of the World Health Organization. He is weighed and measured to see if he is progressing at a normal rate. Later, he will receive a series of inoculations, and his mother gives some advice on feeding. The health of Palestine refugee children compares well with that of non-refugee children in the Middle East. And in the refugee population as a whole, there has never been a serious epidemic during the more than 30 years that UNRWA has been providing health services for Palestine refugees. The one major problem still existing, however, is the high incidence of gastrointestinal diseases among the young. But UNRWA is doing all it can by preventive measures to try and combat the problem. Now it is Daoud's turn to be at school. The same school as his sister. A school threatened with closing because of UNRWA's uncertain income which comes almost completely from voluntary contributions yearly from UN member states. In most areas, UNRWA provides nine years of primary and junior secondary education, ten in Lebanon. And the schools follow the same curriculum as the host countries, making a complicated school system, but allowing children to go on to further education close to their homes. Shalal Al Asi, a graduate of UNRWA's teacher training center at Ramallah in the occupied West Bank, has been teaching English at Bakka since 1969. Where do you live? He tells us how he feels about the threat to UNRWA's education program and the effect it could have on these children. The Palestinian child, born homeless, destitute and deprived of his basic rights, is entitled to the right to an education. UNRWA has been given the mandate to care for Palestine refugees. If it closes its schools, then hundreds of thousands of young Palestinians would be deprived of this basic right to education. It will also mean an emptiness, a psychological emptiness. And it is not impossible that these children could resort to actions that are contrary to the values and traditions of their community. But the schools are full today. They are needed and even more schools are needed to fulfill the hopes of Palestine refugees for a better life that can only come through getting an education. And the presence of UNRWA, its schools and other services for the almost two million refugees, provides a stabilizing effect in the Middle East that could evaporate if UNRWA had to further curtail its programs. After school, 
Some young Palestinians go on to university, as many universities in the area are free, or on one of the few UNRWA scholarships available. Or they go to one of UNRWA's eight vocational and teacher training centers, which have places for almost 5,000 students. These centers provide young refugees with a skill so that they can become economically independent and play a useful role in society. Among the almost 40 courses available are drafting, auto mechanics, surveying, plumbing, refrigeration, electricity. Most of them two-year courses. The vocational training program is currently being expanded as now four out of five applicants to the centers have to be turned away. And both men and women are now studying together in some centers and women are being admitted to courses that were once thought unsuitable for women. More than 25,000 graduates have come out of these schools since the first opened in 1953. After graduation, jobs are plentiful for a skilled worker in the Gulf area, in nearby Arab countries, or near their homes in the host countries. Such as Salwa Josef Aude. She graduated in 1974 from the business and office practice course at UNRWA's Amman Training Center and found work immediately. She is now in charge of the liabilities section at the Jordan Kuwait Bank in Amman. Or Mustafa Hassan Sif, a 24-year-old who is a graduate of the auto mechanics course at the Wadi Sir training center near Amman. He worked for a year and a half in the Gulf area and then returned to Bakar camp where he now lives with his wife and son and operates his own auto repair shop just to the edge of Bakar. As the day ends, the Ultimals are reunited after work, school, shopping, a visit to the UNRWA clinic, and other routine chores. It is a family that looks forward to the future with hope. A family that wants its children to grow up with a good education, an education that could be in danger because of UNRWA's inability to obtain enough voluntary contributions to maintain its services to Palestine refugees even though it has a mandate from the United Nations General Assembly to continue, a mandate that has been regularly renewed over the past 30 years. It is an ordinary family, talking over the day, fussing with the baby, like any family in the world, but with one difference. They are also waiting for the day when the Palestine problem will be solved, and the day when a Palestinian child will no longer be born homeless. Well, no.